Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I have no much time in the Naqshband of Osmanlı Cemaat. Since I enter, I continue to feel more and more blessings. But also from time to time, some tests and all these tests have relation to stay here and continue in the Jemaat and the work. And also after every test, more blessing coming. Is it more difficult to be in this Jemaat than others, even inside the Naqshbandi Tariqah? Could you tell us more, Efendi, about this, please? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Destur, madar. May it be easy for you. Yes, you seem to be able to get and understand what this tariqat is. Is it more difficult to be in this jamaat than in others? Yes. It's very difficult for the ego. It is very easy for the spirit. <coughs> for the ego, it's very difficult. Because in this jamaat, in this Osmanli Naqshbandi Jama'at and the Sahibul Saif we are not here to praise each other or to play games with each other or to have mystical visions with each other or to sit around and talk about dreams and talk about other worlds and talk about secret knowledge with each other we are here old fashioned we are here to step on our ego. We are here to be busy with the Jihad al-Akbar, the Jihad against our nafs. We are here to learn uh, submission. Submission to Allah. First, you have to have submission to the Prophet. Submission to the Prophet, you have to learn how to submit to those whom the Prophet have appointed on us. So we are here to learn submission to our Shaykh. So in that way, it is more difficult because our Shaykh then is going to train us. This is for those who are strong, those who still want to just have a social gathering where the zikr is just an occasion just to dress up, to eat, to joke around, to play, to feel free, not to be having discipline on adab, just want to dance up and down, then there are other jamaats that you can go. Feel free. Everyone I'm saying every day to feel free. You don't like it with us, Sheriff and his way. Feel free, go. There are other jamaats. You go, they will be very happy with you. But our mission is different. Our um, uh, work it is different. Our work is to be busy with Jihad al-Akbar against our nafs and our work is to get ourselves ready to fight against Dajjal and the Dajjalic people and Dajjalic systems to first escape from that and to prepare ourselves for the Hilafat. Because Hazrat Mahdi salam, is coming with the Hilafat. And Hilafat is its own uh, thing. It's not so easy. If you are not having submission to the Shaykh, definitely that time very difficult for you to submit to a Khalifa. So, but it's going to get easier. Already you are feeling it. After every difficulty, there is ease. After every difficulty, there is ease. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised to us. Ease will come. That Allah blesses the ease with only after the difficulty. So, at the same time, we hope for things to be easy for everyone. Are we saying we are the best? No, we are not. Compared to so many, we are not. Compared to the murids of 100 years ago, we are nowhere near. Compared to the ones 500 years ago, don't even talk about it. But we are following real ones who have always been 
holding on strongly to those ones that they are taking their knowledge and their traditions from 100 years, 500 years, 1400 years ago and they're giving it to us in Abdullah. So, inshallah, stick around. Good. You'll gain a lot. Because a man, after a while, he wakes up and he says, no more games. He's saying, all these games, it's not giving me satisfaction. All this discussion of Arabic the root word of everything all this numerology all of this secrets all of this maqamats all of these things after a while if you are a man meaning man or woman coming to a maturity you say these are all still games because I still don't know myself you may know the whole of creation but if you don't know yourself you're still zero and this Jama'at our Sheikh is showing us and teaching us ourselves showing us and teaching us our ego you know your ego then your spirit very easily you will recognize because you are now unwrapping you know the, the ego is wrapping up the spirit if you know your ego you're unwrapping the spirit now once you know yourself you will know your Lord that is Hadith so if you like welcome to you we're not here for a game we are here to listen to Sohbet and to put this Sohbet into our lives to give honor and to give value to what Allah has given honor and value to as much as enough Assalamu alaikum thank you sweet say should one strive to learn Quranic Arabic in order to read and recite the Holy Quran Bismillahirrahmanirrahim of course if you want to recite the Holy Quran, you should learn Arabic. Why you should be learning Chinese or Spanish to recite the Holy Quran? So, if you want to recite the Quran, learn Arabic. If you want to uh, live the Quran, not just reciting, to live the Qur'an and to put the Qur'an into your heart, into your lifestyle that time Arabic is not going to help you Understanding? If you have in front of you the Qur'an Karim which was sent to the Holy Prophet and you have in front of you the Holy Prophet والسلام, Oh, what a dilemma, huh? <laughs> so many Wahhabi types that say, No, 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 Quran. Because Quran is the word of Allah. <laughs> They're going to say, It is Rasulullah. It's okay, but Quran. They're going to say, They're going to concentrate. Huh? So you have the Quran and you have the Prophet Which one are you going to choose? Well, of course you're going to choose the Prophet Because he is the walking Quran <coughs> Because the Quran came to him The Quran They are Allah's words through his tongue Isn't it? There's so many secrets to that, we're not going to get into it. People are going to go crazy and start to say certain things, which, okay, we'll leave it alone. So now, Prophet has appointed his waris, his inheritors. 
Okay? And those inheritors, they are walking Qurans. They are representing him. So now, if you just want to recite, you can learn Arabic. But if you want, which is more important now? Recitation of Quran or living the Quran? If you want to live the Quran, then that time, find those walking Qurans, be with them, learn from them, <coughs> sit with them. At that time, the Quran is not just going to be passing from your throat. It is going to be uh, something that is entering into your heart and beating into the rest of the world, meaning the rest of your body. This much is enough. Assalamu alaikum. Mute it for a while.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yes, it is possible. If you like, you may call us. You may contact us. Sheikh Efendi, Sahib al Saif, is reaching people, especially now after his passing, very unusual places, very far away places, and people are getting attracted and pulled. Allah. Holy Prophet is inviting and pulling. There may be shaitans that are going to block you, that's going to stop you inside and out. Don't let the shaitans to overtake you. We are here to be servants. Our bayat is to our Shaykh, to the Sultan al Awliya, to Holy Prophet, and to Allah. Allah's hand is above everyone's. It is not to me. So if you like, welcome. It'll be good. Because so many, they're getting spoiled. They're seeing and they're hearing every day. And they're getting very spoiled and they be getting very rebellious on top of that. Just like, you know, people living in Haramain, people living in Mecca, People who are dying to see the Kaaba all their lives. They come there once in their lifetime to see the Kaaba. They give full value and respect to that. But the people who live in Mecca every day to see the Kaaba, they don't care so much. Some may even use the area in front of the Kaaba for a shortcut. Instead of circling around, a shortcut. That happens too. But those ones, they're not going to win so much. They're going to keep on losing. Those who show respect, even if they're very far away, they don't know too much, Allah will bless you and reward you and make your way to be open. Those who are very near and they don't give respect and they don't give value, and they're becoming more stubborn and arrogant, be careful for the smack to come. As much as enough. Assalamu alaikum. Say. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. First of all, is the Islamic New Year. First January is the New Year for the Masihi calendar. And there's also the Chinese New Year, as stated in the Chinese lunar calendar. My question is, is it fair for the Muslims in China to be looked down upon the celebrating Chinese New Year? My kids have Chinese blood in them, and they still attend reunion dinners and visit grandpa, aunts, and uncles on such occasions. Isn't that traditional? Does it make us any less of a Muslim? Is it against the Akhidan? I know Christmas is. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Well, I have Chinese blood in me too. Uh, <laughs> no one is looking down on no one. There are certain things that you are doing. It's good. Certain things, Allah and His Prophet, they're liking it. Certain things is not so good. Certain things, they are bad. The actions are. You as a person, you are not maybe, but your actions they are not complete now. This is uh, a delicate but not so delicate issue. Because the word traditional also, people are using it as if traditional means that it has no meaning. It is a neutral word. It just means something that we do over and over again. It has no meaning. It is a ritual. No. Traditions become traditions because they have meaning. They are preserved through hundreds, thousands of years because it has meaning. If it has no meaning, it's going to get thrown to garbage. 
Now every uh, people, every nation that is accepting Islam, they also have their own pre-Islamic traditions. Isn't it? Every nation. The Arabs, before Islam, they have their own pre-Islamic traditions too. But after they receive Islam, they threw away the traditions that does not fit into Islam. Egyptians, they are not Arabs. Oh, it's one of the bigger civilization, isn't it? In the world, Egyptians. They have their own traditions too. So many. But when they gave bayat to the Prophet ﷺ, when they took shahadat, when they live Islam, they left those traditions. When Islam entered into the Indian subcontinent, India, the Indians, they have a very strong tradition too, correct? Pre-Islamic. Pakistanis, for example, or Indian Muslims, they could also say, well, it's just traditional, we want to celebrate holy festival. There's one festival, Hindu festival, they throw colored water at people. Eh, it's nothing. It's okay, just throwing, and it's just traditional. But no, they didn't. They left that. Understand that the examples that I'm putting here also, it is to a nation that as a nation, as a majority, they have accepted Islam and there is Islamic ruling on these nations. There was never real Islamic ruling in China. There wasn't. There are certain places in Southeast Asia, for example in Malaysia, when they accepted Islam, they left mostly the traditions that doesn't fit into Islam. But when you look at Indonesia, although it is the world's largest Muslim country, what, 220 million? There are still, though, certain numbers of people who are holding on to their pre-Islamic traditions. Strongly. They say, no, no, it's just tradition. It's nothing to do with belief. Tradition has everything to do with belief. It has nothing to do with religion. Those traditions have everything to do with tradition. We're not going to interfere, but it is not how Allah and His Prophet and the Sahabai Kiram and the Tabi'in and the Tabi Tabi'in strongly that they are recommending and that they are doing, showing us what to do. Otherwise, the Arabs will still have their own traditions, pre Islamic, that they put in and they say, no. We still have to celebrate Arabic New Year or Arabic Spring Festival. The Persians, although they accepted Islam, the Shias, it is not Ahli Sunnah. And although there's open hadith that forbid Nauruz, the Iranians, the Shias, they still celebrate Nauruz. What is Nauruz? Springtime, New Year. So now, if you are Muslim in China and you want to celebrate Chinese New Year, I'm not going to stop you. People do whatever you think is right. Do I think it is right? Because I'm part Chinese, I'm going to celebrate Chinese New Year. 
I'm going to say no. I'm not going to. You have uncles and grandparents who are Chinese and they have Chinese reunion dinner and other things. Like over here, so many people who come into Islam from Christian backgrounds here, especially in this Jamaat, we spoke about this just last week. We have people and their families celebrating non-Islamic things. It's okay. They yeah, celebrate their religion. Christmas. Christmas dinner. Our way is to say, we are not saying don't have reunion dinner. Don't meet with your family. We are not saying cut off all ties with them because they are not Muslims and we are Muslims. No, keep still close contact with them. But if you have to uh, meet with them, to have dinner with them, don't do it on the time that they are doing it according to their religion. It is not. It is not recommended. You want to have reunion? Come one day before. Go there one day after. You say there is nothing to do with Akida. Come on now. I know a little bit about Chinese mythology also. Yeah. It's not just Chinese mythology, Chinese religion. It's not just stories. People believe in it. It was a religion. Now, we're not looking down on you. We understand how things are difficult. May Allah make it easy for you. But since you're asking me the question, we say, now start to balance a few things. Don't cut off all ties, but Muslims must have their own identity. And sometimes their own identity, you are not going to please too many people. Then you have to sit down and really make a decision. Who are you trying to please? Who are you trying to please? And whose pleasure is most important to you? Allah and His Prophet or His creatures. And believe me, if you start pleasing Allah and His Prophet according to this way of Haq, His creatures will be happy with you too. You may not like it one time, two times, third time, they'll be okay. Then you see so much blessings coming because of that. So, you want to have reunion? Say, you have reunion. You cook in your own house during Bayram or Mawlud. Invite everyone, your whole family, to come to your house. Say, sorry, I couldn't go. Now, you come. I cook everything for you. No pork, though. No pork on my fork. No alcohol. But everyone is welcome to come. They say, I couldn't make it. Now everyone I'm inviting. That time, there'll be more blessings, inshallah. As much is enough for you. May Allah forgive me and bless you and make it easy for you. Al Fatiha. Say. If one has a choice to be in Jamaat, should they join you? At my college, open the young men lead the Jamaat, but I feel uncomfortable since they are unlikely to know much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Well, choose a good Jamaat. Everywhere there is Jamaat. There's good Jamaat and there's pretty bad Jamaat. Choose a good Jamaat. Uh, the young men in your college, Hari the Jamaat, they don't know too much. Uh, find a better Jamaat to be with. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to be with that Jamaat 24 hours or 7 days a week. Or no. So many people, for example, they are uh, liking our Jamaat, but they cannot be with us. They live very far away, but they want to be in our Jamaat. Then we say, you're welcome. You may follow us, you may call, you may be, you may 
keep contact, you'll be accepted as part of the Jamaat, inshallah. And do we claim to know anything? No, we don't claim to know anything. Whatever that is necessary, whatever that is useful, whatever that is beneficial, definitely, is coming from our Shaykh. It's not coming from us. So, but our Shaykh is very generous and he has so much to give. If you like, be with us. If you don't, you are free. You be, can be with anyone. If you want, be alone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As much is enough for you. I will see you tomorrow, inshallah. Al Fatiha. Amen. Assalamu alaikum.